Good afternoon and welcome to this weekend's edition of Mox News. I'm Ron Farrell. And I'm Shannon Sharp. Interim Chancellor Grady Bogue was diagnosed with colon cancer in June. After treatment, the doctors have given him 7 to 14 days to live. UTC bid farewell to the Bogues early in July, soon after his diagnosis. Linda, Bogues' wife, set up a blog on CaringBridge to update students and faculty on his condition. The latest update was posted October 17th and said that Bogue had almost stopped eating completely. When he stops drinking fluids, he is predicted to be in his final days. Nurses and family are now taking care of Bogue 24-7. The family asks that if anyone needs to contact them during this hard time to email bbogue at gmail.com or you can visit their website at caringbridge.org slash visit slash Grady Bogue to write encouraging messages in their guest book or learn more information. UTC celebrated Campus Sustainability Week with a Green Power Party. The Sustainability Committee put the party together in order to raise awareness about UTC's sustainability celebrates uh, campus sustainability across the entire nation. So we're throwing a festival to raise awareness about uh, sustainability at UTC and give um, some giveaways um, to get the name out of UTC sustainability and also just help the students have a little fun for this week. So. They had several activities this week such as pumpkin painting, vendor fair, and a concert. And the innards of the pumpkins will go into our sustainable gardens at Lock Miller and on the South Campus. Tomorrow we have a sustainable vendor fair with over 30 vendors that are going to talk about what they do in the community to save energy and to be more environmentally aware. And then tomorrow night we're having a concert with three bands. UTC Sustainability was created in 2011 to complete different goals such as incorporate energy efficiency and sustainability in construction, renovation, green space projects, and more. Several years ago, the students voted to have a green fee as part of their tuition. And I was hired to um, help administer the green fee and to be energy efficient on campus, reduce our campus carbon footprint, reduce our gas emissions, um, improve recycling programs. And part of the way that we do that is to educate students on all the good things that they can do. If you want to get more involved, you can contact Lisa Darger, Sustainability Coordinator, or visit their web page at utc.edu slash sustainability. After many polls and talks with students, SGA is now releasing course evaluations. We hope that it will increase the amount of students who participate in evaluations, and that also helps faculty and administrators too as they go through evaluation processes. Course evaluations allow students to get another perspective and opinions of professors. Students have the opportunity then to see how other students perceive a professor. And so for the purposes of course selection, it plays a really pivotal role because you can look at a professor and based on some of the, the quantitative data points, you can say, well, this professor meets this type of standard and I like that type of standard in my classroom. Be on the lookout for more information about when the evaluations will go up. Donnie has our weekend weather forecast. Let's head to him to see if this October weather will settle in. Donnie. Thanks, Shannon and Ron. Good day, Mox. Saturday morning, we will have an excellent chance for a killing frost. The sky should be clear and the winds will die down. That will let the temperatures drop into the 20s in the outlying areas and the lows in the cities will drop to near freezing. So be prepared once again for that cold weather. The sun will shine nicely for your weekend, though, with highs climbing near 60 degrees on Saturday and highs will continue into the mid-60s for your Sunday. You can expect the lows to remain in the mid to upper 30s. Next week, we'll see warmer weather with highs rebounding into the 70s. Clouds will continue to increase Wednesday with showers and a few storms possible on your Thursday. That is your weather update for the weekend, and I hope that everyone will hop aboard that warm train and be a mock. Wednesday night, the Women's Center presented Take Back the Night. Take Back the Night is an international march and rally that brings awareness to power-based violence. It was started because a woman was murdered a few feet from her home. So um, that's kind of where it started. It's based around this premise that women a lot of times are afraid to go outside at night alone because um, the idea of the night attacker. And so take back the night is just to reclaim the night and say that we shouldn't be afraid. And that goes for men too because men get attacked as well. The statistics vary, but we know that roughly one in six women will be the victim of sexual assault in her lifetime and one in 33 males. The event was brought to UTC for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I'll just learn that these are real people that are, you know, that are having violence against them. These are real people and that, you know, I'll realize how important it is, you know, by hearing true stories. So. During the event, students and the public were welcome to enjoy live music from a local band 
and uh, listen to speaker Kate Nida, a nationally known victim of sexual assault. There was also a march and a candlelight vigil to remember those affected by violence. The student media of UTC will be hosting a Halloween party in the Chattanooga rooms of the University Center October 30th from 6 to 9 p.m. The University Echo, Mox News, and The Perch will be there spooking you. The event will include a costume contest, photo booth, spooky trivia game, music, and of course free candy among other treats. This party is a way for student media to converge with one another. The Perch will do a live broadcast during the party, Mox News will broadcast and conduct interviews, and the Echo will live tweet from their Twitter. It is also a vehicle for the other outlets to put themselves out there for students to get a first-hand glimpse of who provides the campus news for students. Come out and enjoy the festivities on Halloween Eve with Campus Media. Costumes are not required but are highly recommended for they could win you a special prize in the costume contest being judged at 8 o'clock. You can enter the contest individually or as a group of two or more. All aboard UTC is back. Ashley traveled to Blowing Screens Farm to check out their hunt. Hi, this is Ashley Brockman with All Aboard Chattanooga. I hope you've all been enjoying this beautiful fall weather, but Halloween is right around the corner. So in order to get into the spooky spirit, we took a trip over to Blowing Screams Farms at the bottom of Lookout Mountain. Is he behind me? He's behind me, isn't he? <laughs> Rock City owns uh, Blowing Springs Farm, which during the daytime, it's like a fall festival type atmosphere. We have a petting zoo, uh, corn maze, uh, the kids can pick pumpkins. Um, you know, it's just a really fun atmosphere for the kids and family. Uh, but then at nighttime, turns into Blowing Screams Farm. So that's when the haunted house comes out and you got creatures like this running around here. And um, so, you know, it's a, it doubles as a, as a fall festival and as a haunted house on the weekends. So. We're about to take you on a sneak peek inside the Blowing Screams Farm haunt. I'm a little scared, so let's hope we make it out alive. Oh my god. <laughs> The haunted house is a, is a former laboratory where they would perform experiments on animals, people, and everything. And um, it's been abandoned this year. Um, so they, you know, the few employees that were left last year walked away, just left left it. Um, there's some FBI agents that got hung up in there, um, and they got were victims of the um, of the mutants. And so now they're just roaming free. So it's an abandoned laboratory with free roaming mutants. So enter at your own risk. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> awesome. yeah, you have a lot of fun. <laughs> For student talent this week, Justin and Mitchell are switching things up in honor of Disabilities Awareness Month. Let's see what they have. Now, the month of October is best known for Halloween, obviously, and uh, breast cancer awareness. But some people don't know that it's also um, Disability Awareness Month. And in honor of Disability Awareness Month, we made a short film. So, with that said, here's a trailer for that video. And if you want to watch the entire video, you can go to youtube.com forward slash the JEMA Productions. That does it for this weekend's Mox News. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to check out our videos uploaded throughout the week to YouTube. We air on Housing Channel 2.3 and Cable Channel 3, so tune in. Until next time, have a great weekend from all of us here at Mox News.